Hello, 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 and welcome to another broadcast of Inner Circle Ministries. Well, I'm your host here, Rico Blakeney, where we take things here on our YouTube ministry and we uh, take things from up under the microscope. Um, and we work on our self-mastery that way. Um, and so if we put things up under the microscope, we can actually see things for what they are, see things we couldn't see with the what the, we would call the naked eye or the normal eye, but to take a real deeper, close look at them. Um, and then after we can um, examine the things that we see up under the microscope, then we can come away and um, handle our life accordingly. Um, so this broadcast here, this is the key to unlocking the Bible. Um, I believe it's 4.11 or 4.12. Not sure. Don't hold it against me. But we're back. We're still with the um, conclusion of Parable 2. Um, a little bit more background on it as, as we uh, get ready to, to get into it is that um, the Book of Enoch, from most of the research I can find, it, it was written before um, even the Old Testament or the Torah. Um, from the information, the, the date of the Torah outdates it because they say of the oral way it was probably passed down through orally before it was on right on papaya um and things of that nature but um so the book of Enoch was written um prior to and a lot of the information that we're getting into or um that'll be shown on here you get it and read it yourself or whatever but the information that we're showing uh it, it'll help show or i would say it helped me Filling a bunch of gaps from the New Testament and some from the Old Testament and a lot of things. And like I say, if you was raised up like I was or a study of the Bible or paid attention to it a lot, there are certain references and certain phrases and certain way you will see uh, things described or talked about from the Old Testament to the New Testament. There's a big difference. And sometimes you will look at those discrepancies or contradictions as well, but there are a lot of just unknown. Even with the Book of Enoch, it's been translated from the um, Aramic, the Aramic, and the um, Hebrew or whatever. Um, so it's been translated, even the one that we're reading. And um, just from the way it's written, I haven't looked at the, or actually seen the actual um, uh, um, scriptures or um, the tab, uh, not the tablets, but the actual books of the Enochs or the scriptures that they have. To say what's being missing, what what ain't being missing, or what's been translated, or, or for say, <clears throat> what what's actually like. Sometimes they're not complete sets. Even with some of the things from Dead Sea Scroll, there was bits and pieces of the scriptures. Um, I think they say in the book of, of the Ethiopian Bible had the complete the complete book, but it still seems like, as you see as we go through these here, the way some of these. Uh, books or the way we end in certain chapters or parables or whatever that it still seems like something is missing or something um that may be a continuation of something <clears throat> but anyway all of it should be used for good information once you see it you be able to make the rightful judgment and i just share from my opinion thoughts and um my, my experience thoughts and my knowledge on it and um for say my perspective from my experiences but we're going to jump in and i um I don't want to prolong you long here. So once again, though, if I haven't done it already, I want to thank you for joining in uh, new subscribers and old subscribers. Thank you for being a part. Um, most of all, congratulations on your own search and your own journey and you wanting to grow and to seek information to help aid and assist you in, in your journey. Um, that sometimes we call life. I'm going to uh, get my screen share right. Try to hear and know. Uh, Pull up the good stuff. Give me one second. Okay. I think whenever I did the 4.1, we stopped off at verse 50. But if we did, and we're going to pick back up, because I think it's where, where we stopped off at. Here, verse 50 starts to say that the angel of peace answered, saying unto me, Wait a little while, and there shall be revealed unto thee all the secret things which surround the Lord of Spirits. And they were talking about the four mounts that he's seen of different types of metals and iron. So go back and watch the old one, and um, you you will be able to see what it was at. But we're going to keep moving down here to 51. And these mountains which thine eyes have seen, 
the mountain of iron and the mountain of copper and the mountain of silver and the mountain of gold and the mountain of soft metal and the mountain of lead. All these shall be in the presence of the elect one as wax before the fire and like the water which streams down from above <clears throat> and they shall become powerless before his feet. And then it shall come to pass in those days that none shall be saved either by gold or by silver and none uh, will be able to escape. And like from this point going forward, um, if you've read in Revelation, I heard about, I think it's Daniel and um, Daniel, and I think it's Isaiah, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but the Older Testament's um, speaking about some of the things in Revelation, you'll hear some of the writers have some of the same like information, even in Revelations, and um, it was taught to us to um, like when the time comes, you won't be able to do anything. Um, they even talks about how the mountains will get up and move and hide. And, you know, so when that time comes of tribulation at the last time before, or they called it the um, the last judgment, um, or the great judgment where everything comes to an end and everybody got to get in line and pay account for things that they did and be judged by Christ for, for all the things that they've done or not acknowledging God and um, living a sinful life. And things of that nature. But you hear a lot of similarities in here. So um, I just wanted to point that out as you go through. Just try to keep your ears open for for those familiar things and um, that you've heard before and those other scriptures are. If you haven't, um, like I say, in Revelations, uh, read the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel. And I, um, I want to say uh, Isaiah. Okay. Uh, 54. <clears throat> and these shall... And there shall be no iron for war, nor shall one clothe oneself with a breastplate. Bronze shall be of no service, and tin shall not be esteemed, and lead shall not be desired. <clears throat> and all these things shall be destroyed from the surface of the earth. And I looked and turned to another part of the earth, and saw there a deep valley with burning fire. For they brought the kings of the mighty, the kings and the mighty, and began to cast them into this deep valley, the big big pit i think we talked about it before too with the watchers so this right here is like some of the things he's seeing in this parable and just for my 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 observation i would say they, they all go hand in hand and just like a deeper detail or continuation of or the continuation from the punishment that was spoken about that was going to come to him now we're actually going to see the punishment that is going to take place Okay, in the 57, and there, and there my eyes saw how they made these, their instruments, iron chains of immeas immeasurable weight. And I asked the angel of peace who went with me, saying, for whom are these chains being prepared? And he said unto me, these are being prepared for the, for the host of Azael, so that they, sh they may take them and cast them into the abyss of complete condemnation. And they shall cover their jaws with rough stones as the Lord of Spirits commanded. And Michael and Gabriel, Raphael, Raphael, and uh, Peniel or Peniel, not sure, um, shall take hold of them on that great day and cast them on that day into the burning furnace, that the Lord of Spirit may be, may take vengeance on them for their unrighteousness and the, in becoming subjects to Satan or the accuser and leading astray those who dwell on the earth. So Satan, here's the same thing we spoke about earlier in the earlier videos. Um, the accuser, um, not as a physical being or a certain person, but um, like um, as a title. And you hear about the accuser or you hear about Satan. We hear about him in the garden and all these other things. This right here was interpreted to mean um, or it meaning of it is the accuser. And the accuser is just one that is in opposition of the truth. Um, a lot of times we are God and we are the accuser. Say, for instance, um, you have the thought of having $50,000 in the next two months. Um, and then you yourself or your brain or your physical consciousness of all the things that I would say that we bring into our, our own mind. Um if it's through our upbringing, through our uh, uh, leisure time, through our actual learning, um, 
but the thing that we bring in, our brain is able to take that information and compute it and, and spit out uh, uh, data based off of that information, but it doesn't come up with its own. It's able to uh, receive and then compile and then um, give back out. <clears throat> but excuse me, saying that, a lot of times whenever we have that thought, then we would have all the ways that we can't come up with the 50,000. I may not, I may only make this much an hour on my job or I work for myself and only can see this amount of income coming in um, or I don't have the money to put here or I don't have the way to do this. And then this is the accuser that has come through to 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 be in opposition with the truth. And the truth is that the $50,000 is there now and you're going to have it and it's going to be there. Just don't allow the accuser to take your consciousness or that good thought and, and do the same thing that happened with Eve, they say, in the garden. Uh, do not be beguiled or deceived by the, by the serpent or by Satan or by the accuser. Don't allow those thoughts of your own or uh, those thoughts that your brain or your, your lower vibrational self produce. Um, don't give your energy to it because if that's what you give your energy to, to all those other thoughts, no matter how bad you want that 50000 to come to pass, you won't be able to bring it to pass because you put all these other stumbling blocks in the way. You're allowed to cues and have this way. But anyway, um, I think it was at 60. We're going down here at 61. And in those days shall punishment come from the Lord of Spirits, and he will open all the chambers of the waters, which are above the heavens and of the fountains, which are beneath the earth. But so before we go into this, this is another part why I wanted you to pay attention to, because to me, um, as I read into this, and we go back up here in these different times, and I was kind of like, even with, I think it started at 59, when I was going back to make sure I, I was seeing what I believe that I was seeing, is that he said unto me, these are the beings prepared for the host of Azel, so they shall take them and cast them into the abyss of complete condemnation. They shall cover their jaws with the stones. Um, when Michael, the day of the great day running, I know he was saying from he was talking about from a time like when that time comes, this is going to happen and all these things are going to happen. And then, you know, for Azel to be locked up and all the other angels that was cast out or falling from uh, heaven or the rest of his hosts from the book of Enoch that that taught me and all these other things. Um, and I did want to bring this up, too. I don't forgot which one of the watchers it was, but he talked about one of the. The one of the big secrets that he taught mankind was to write because it wasn't for man to write on paper. It wasn't for him to put down that energy onto a piece of paper or, um, you know, so anyway, that opens a rabbit hole for should it all be on a tablet or the sin putting it on paper where it can be changed and altered, you know, the things why they were putting on the tablets and the older writings that we have, why they was put on walls and made out of stone so they can't be changed or altered. They would be there eternally. Anyway, that's just some of some of my thoughts but <clears throat> as I went through this I um, I want you to see that it shows in here that a lot of the things in Revelation we're waiting to happen have already taken place and it took place with the flood so the destruction of the fallen angel or um, that dragon uh, Satan at the end that the uh, angels or Christ get to be peaks and uh, the seven headed serpent and then um um, Lyathan and the behemoth and, you know, the male and female circles of the seed that were destroyed and got uh, killed. We talked about it here as well. <clears throat> so it sounds like to me from what the book of Enoch is saying is that it's already, uh, that well, for us it's past tense, but it's going to take place during the flooding because, if, you know, we're talking the Bible, we're going to hear a reference in here too about whenever God repented that he made man, then he destroyed man, he repented that he destroyed man, so he put his covenant what we call the rainbow in the sky so it would be a, a, a covenant for man to see as long as the earth is above and the heaven, heaven is above and earth is below that, you know, he'll never destroy the earth or mankind um, with water so, and we get in here, we're going to see that as well, so just a thought, so I'm not saying that anybody else said it, but if, if they haven't I, this is me first saying that I my first time hearing about it outside of my head in my quiet time that, that, that a lot of time we're waiting on things that's already taking place. We're trying to wait on a revelation or 
appear to be a revelation because a lot of the writing was written after things had taken place. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to be giving a, it's easier to write a revelation than it is to give one um, in that present time. So all the stuff that we get, we're going to get past tense writing, past tense information. But anyway, anyway, try to try to stay on subject. But, but like I was saying, um, so the whole thing with the Son of Man um, um, sitting on the judgment seat and all these other things, they're, they're already take, they've already took place. So uh, we get later on to details more about the New Testament, the writers, mostly being Paul and the four anonymous writers that we know as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, um, and different letters written to different uh, churches and different people, Corinthians and all those other things. We'll get into more details about that. But um, just in a nutshell, a lot of those things that's written, of course, say, I believe, is already taking place. So we continue to go with the evidence that I believe that supports it, that I know supports my thought. Um, I think we're back down here at 61. I'm going to redo 61 if I did it already. In those days shall punishment come from the Lord of Spirits, and he will open up all the chambers of the waters from above the heavens and of the fountains which are beneath the earth. And all the waters shall be joined with the waters. That which is above the heavens is the masculine, and the waters which is beneath the earth is the feminine. And they shall destroy all who dwell on the earth and those who dwell under the ends of the heavens. And then they have recognized their unrighteousness, which they have wrought on the earth, then by these shall they perish. And after that, the head of days repented and said, in vain have I destroyed all who dwelt on the earth. And all this stuff, as I talked about earlier, is what talks about the flood. Um, so from the binding and the building of the chains to take these um, uh Aziel and all of those to their um, complete condemnation and all of the other people that they've seen getting thrown into the uh, fires and all this other stuff, the punishment that's, that's done happen and the, the flood is what did away with the rest of the humans or the rest of mankind in the earth. <clears throat> and the head of days is what we would, we, what I would know from the Bible to be Jesus, his father, the Lord, the, the God that is in heaven. So the Lord of days and then the son of man, which we hear about, or the elect one is is the one which both have their same seats and all the other things. So that also plays into the the, um, the different offices, but they are not the same individuals holding different offices for us speaking on the Trinity. But they are all different entities. But anyway, um, that's the, so that was what he said, uh, 2064. And in vain I have destroyed all who dwell on the earth. And he swore by his great name, henceforth I will not do so to all who dwell on the earth. And I will set a sign in the heavens, and this shall be a pledge of good faith between me and them forever, so long as heaven is above the earth. And this is the accordance by my commandment. When I have desired to take hold of them by the hand of the angels on that day of tribulation and pain cause of this, I will cause my chastisement and my wrath to abide upon them, saith God, the Lord of spirits. And so even with this right here, um, I don't think I, well, I've already planned on not going into the book of Noah. I'll leave it for you to do your research on it. And if we get back into more about the book of Enoch, because I, um, it just has took up a bunch of the keys of unlocking the Bible. But <clears throat> if we get back into more of the Enoch, we may go into those things there. But the same way that um, it was spoke about how Noah was, was, was told about and Enoch knew about him and all the others. Um, know about them and Methuselah and all those and, and Noah did it um, come down to the time of the great flood and being given the instructions on building the ark and those natures and and saving all mankind of him taking them by the hand this just that's not, this part is my interpretation and this but the reason is in all of my teachings but that is why he's going to take them by the hand and all the other punishment is not going to cease um, it was taught to us in a song about drip drop, drip drop, 
the rain's coming, Noah built the ark. Um, people on the outside begging to get in. Noah says, God got the keys and I can't let you in. Drip, drop, oh, drip, drop. But uh, the destruction of everybody else going through what they were going through, uh, the flood was not hindered. It was still happening. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I think we're here at 67. Ye mighty kings who dwell on the earth, ye shall have to behold mine elect who how he sits on the throne of glory and judges Aziel and all his associates and all the hosts in the name of the Lord of Spirits. And I saw there the host of angels of punishment going, and they held scorns of chains of iron and bronze. And I asked the angel of peace who went with me, saying, To whom are these who hold these scorns going? So before we get further in here, too, um, it's talking about how that the people of the earth and mighty kings and all these other people will be able to actually witness Aziel and um, his band of merry men <laughs> and all those other angels that did all the wrath on the earth with mankind through woman. Um, they were able to see that happen and see him get thrown into the fire and uh, see him get bound to chain and see the other one get thrown into the fire. Um, and then um, them being destroyed later. Um, okay. And and like I said before, what made me see about that this all is already taking place, it tells you here that it's all happened prior to the flood, because as Enoch goes through here, he would talk about him looking at different places on the earth, not going to different times or different time lapse or different time periods of different things happening, but all of them being from different positions during the same time. So even with that, the time frame of seeing all this happen and take place are all pre uh, uh um talking about pre-flood or before the flood happened and destroying of the earth. Okay. <clears throat> and I uh 68 and I saw there the host of the angels of punishment going and they held scorned of chains of iron or bronze. And I asked the angel of peace who went with me, saying, To whom are these who hold these scorn or uh, scorned is going? And he said unto me, to their elite and beloved ones, that they may be cast into the uh, shams of the abyss of the valley. So the angels of the uh, the kids and the children and their beloved ones, their women, their Nephilim, their um, giants that they produce in the land would be thrown off into that from what we were taught from the Bible. But just from Enoch's perspective, we're just going to stick on that their, their seeds and the ones that they made upon the earth. And I think Somewhere in the book of Enoch earlier, Virgin, we were talking about some of the ones that they, um, some of them turned into mermaids. Um, and then a bunch of them were going to be left behind to be bad spirits upon the earth and be called demonic and, and, and terrifying demons upon the earth. So these are the chains made for those group of people. I have to go back and watch the earlier videos to, to catch up with it because I'm not sure in which one it was, but um, or which one of the watchers it was. Or oh, the early parable, I'm not sure. <clears throat> uh, we're here at 71. And then that valley shall be filled with their elect and beloved, and the days of their lives shall be at the end, and the days of their leading astray the shall not thenceforth be reckoned. And in those days, the angels shall return and hurl themselves to the east upon the Patreons and Medes, now, uh, I believe these are two countries somewhere around Persia and all the other times, the Medes, Medianites. I'm not sure which one, but they are, I believe that's what they're speaking about. <clears throat> they shall stir up the king so that a spirit of unrest shall come upon them and they shall rouse them from their thrones that they may break forth as lions from their lairs as its hungry wolves among their flocks. And they shall go up and tread upon foot the head of his elect ones. But the city of the righteous shall be hindrance to their horses, and they shall begin to fight among themselves, and their right and shall be among, um, but shall be strong against themselves. And a man shall not know his brother, nor a son, his father, or his mother, till there be no number of the corpse through their slaughter and their punishment be not in vain. And in those days shall shall open his jaws, and they shall be swallowed up therein. Their destruction shall be at the end. Sheol shall devour the sinners in their presence of the elite. And, um, you know, in the 
I think, is it, well, I know it's in the news tip from when it speaks about, I think it was Jesus that said that whenever you hear about wars and rumors of wars and all this other stuff, you know, the time is now, but don't get frightened. But I'm not sure if it's in Revelation that talks about it too, though. But knowing towards the end of time, you always hear about the wars and rumors of wars. And actually here talking about the angels going up there to stir these guys up to cause these wars. And it's going to get a bunch of the sinful people uh, killed. <laughs> and she always going to take them and devour the sinners, but the righteous will still be preserved. So that concept still runs through the book of Enoch as well. And it comes to pass after this that I saw another host of wagons and men riding thereon and going on the wings, winds from the east and from the west to the south. And the noise of their wagons were heard. And when this turmoil took place, the holy ones from heaven reckoned, remarked it. And the pillars of the earth were moved from their place. And the sound thereof was heard from the one end of heaven to the other in one day. And they shall all fall down and worship the Lord of spirits. And this is the end of the second parable. And so that's where that, that ends off at. And I don't think I'm going to go into the third parable. Mostly it talks about, uh, well, at the end of it, it talks about the destruction and the end of the kings. But before then, it talks more about the stars and their place and the energy that they put off. So, I have to finish the third parable. I'm just not going to do it today. So I've made my mind up about that. So we'll finish up uh, the third parable another time. And we'll be finished with the book of Enoch. Then we'll jump back over. Um, I don't know if we're getting to the Emerald Tablets or the Numerish or, or if we get back in Genesis and titles together. But that will be the next thing. That'll be into the keys to unlocking the Bible, five point something. Um, but yeah, as I was saying earlier, um, as you can read through in here, it sounds like all this stuff has already taken place and he's already described the things that were going to happen to the fallen and all the other people and the wicked and um, and then the flood's gonna gonna signify that and it's gonna gonna handle that. So we have to get more into to see about this other rapture and this other thing that <laughs> that's gonna supposedly take place or the other revelations of the end or what other end it is to take place and if these are one and the same but i want to thank you for coming out today um thank you for spending your time and energy whenever you do come out and watch the video we'd like to subscribe like and comment no matter what it is like a, uh, we talked about before all comments are open all comments are welcome as long as they're not um thrown in no kind of way to be derogatory or not to edify anybody in a certain manner um, it is a learning platform and for uplifting. So anything that you do share, comment, or write down, make sure it's in a way to whereas it's receivable and it can be educational or helpful to someone else. But if it's going to be harmful or damaging or disgraceful or distasteful, uh, um, it may be addressed, but it will, will not be tolerated. It'll be addressed and, and, and erased. But until the next time, um, peace, love, prosperity and screen wealth and screen health to everybody. May you strive in your self-mastery um, and continuously to do it. No matter how much time may lapse in between, uh, be consistent in your self-mastery. Continue to grow where you need to grow and allow growth to take its place and allow disconnections and displacement to take their places. Um, we love you and we thank you. And um, peace, love, prosperity, and a screen wealth until next time.